I mentioned the print function can be used to help us find bugs in our code, but what is a bug? What does a bug look like in Python code? So let's talk a bit about bugs and we'll return to the print function in a little bit. Now you probably realize that bugs are errors in computer code, but there are two different types of bugs in general. We could say there are syntactic bugs and these are bugs where the interpreter cannot understand the code. So we write something and its syntax, its grammar is flawed to the point where the interpreter says I can't decide what you mean here. Another type of bug is a semantic bug. And by semantic we mean meaning, the meaning of something. So in this case we can write legal code but it doesn't produce the desired result. And this could be for any number of reasons. For instance, we've written a minus sign where we should have written a plus sign. So that's legal code insofar as the interpreter knows, but it may produce the incorrect result. Or we may have implemented an algorithm incorrectly, maybe left out a step but it's still legal code. So those are semantic errors. And in general, the interpreter will catch syntactic bugs, but not semantic bugs. At this stage of the game, we won't try to use the print function to find bugs. Let's instead try to use it to generate bugs, to produce bugs, so we get a feel for what they look like. And one thing to keep in mind is that we won't break Python or your computer by entering buggy code. So I mentioned before that the print function can take multiple arguments. So let's try something. Let's try calling or invoking the print function with two arguments. So we write print, open parentheses, and then one argument we'll say is hello. And then like we do with math functions, let's separate arguments by commas. So I have one string here, some text enclosed in quotes that's hello, put a comma there, and then let's try world, and that's a string, text enclosed in quotes, close parentheses, and then if I hit return now, we'll call or invoke this function, and we can see what happens. But before I do that, let me add a comment to the rest of this line. Let's say that this syntax that we're trying here, argument, comma, argument, is motivated by what we've seen probably in our math classes where we have a math function, maybe a function f that takes two arguments, maybe they're called x and y. So we're guessing that maybe this will work. And something to notice here is that we start this line with a call to the print function and then after that hash symbol, that is all just a comment. So that will be ignored. So let's see what happens when I hit return. Oh, and we see that there doesn't appear to be any error here. There isn't. And we just get the output that we got before. Hello world. All right, I've mentioned that parentheses are pretty important when it comes to functions. But in the spirit of exploration, let's try calling the print function with a single argument, a single string, hello world, but we'll omit the parentheses and see what happens. So now when I hit return, the interpreter responds by saying syntax error, and there's this colon and it says invalid syntax. We also see a highlight at the end of the previous line of code. So technically we say that the interpreter raised an exception. It generated this error and it's now up to us to try and figure out what that error message means. And these error messages can be cryptic at times, but one thing I can guarantee you that the more errors you generate, the more quickly you'll be able to decipher these error messages in the future. So don't hesitate to make errors. The more errors you make, the faster you'll be able to solve errors. In any case, the error here was caused by our lack of parentheses. Let's try something else. So let's put those parentheses 
back in. But now let's try leaving off the quotation mark. So let's try hello world. And when we hit return now, yeah, we see that we again get a syntax error. So that's no good, but it's not completely bad in that we learn something. We learn that those quotation marks are necessary. So let's try something else. So let's again go with print. We've been enclosing this string of text within double quotes. Let's try a single quotation mark and hello world and a closed single quotation mark. And now when we hit return, oh, that worked. So it looks like when it comes to a string, we can use either single quotes or double quotes. But how about uh, could we use a single quote and a double quote? And when we hit return now, oh, we again get a syntax error. But what follows that syntax error at the front of the line changes. It now has EOL while scanning string literal. And again, things can be very cryptic here. EOL means end of line. And we'll talk later about what a string literal is. And in fact, we'll spend a whole lot of time talking about strings in general. So for now, just keep in mind that strings can be enclosed in either single quotes or double quotes, but not a mix of the two. Now let's try one more experiment. Let's try calling the print function but now let's put some blank spaces in here. So maybe a space, then the open parens, then a space, and then let's put the argument in here of hello world, just a single string, and then a space, and then a close parens. Now when we hit return, will this cause errors having all this spacing in there? And it turns out, no, that works just fine. So Python, the Python interpreter, doesn't care about the space in there.